Hi, welcome to Tarbidian's Electronics channel. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the concept of phasers, which are a neat little shorthand that can be used to represent AC quantities in electrical circuits. The bottom line is that a phaser represents a magnitude and a phase, and it's therefore a complex number that can be represented in rectangular or polar coordinates. So this video provides a little bit of background on where the concept comes from as well as a description of the notation used to represent phasers. In this animation here, the height or the projection of the rotating vector on the y-axis generates a sinusoid. Now if we pause this animation at a particular point and then let's redraw this over here. So I have my rotating vector here that's generating or that's got an angle of theta between it and the x-axis, the height of that, let's call that y, is equal to the length of the vector, let's call the vector a, times the sine of that angle. So as that angle is changing and it's changing at a constant rate, the height or the value of y is also going to be changing proportional to the sine of that angle. We can use the symbol omega to represent the angular velocity around, around the origin here. And omega is the number of radians, or two pi radians. So how if that, that would be one full rotation divided by the period. And so the period is going to be how long it takes to do one full rotation. And then we know, assuming that theta starts at, at time t equals zero, theta is equal to zero, the angle at any point in time is going to be the angular velocity times the time. And that's going to be measured in radians. Now since theta is time dependent, we can write out an equation for y that's also time dependent. We can write it out as y of t equals a, the length of the, ve the vector, times the sine of omega t. t is the independent variable, and y, which is the, the projected height of a, is the dependent variable that's dependent on time. We can also look at the projection of the vector on the x-axis as it rotates around. If we stop it at a particular point in time and just look at that snapshot, so I've got the vector here, still making this angle theta between it and the x-axis and the projection of the vector on the x-axis is that component there and that value of x is going to be equal to a times the cosine of theta where again a is the length of the vector and again theta is changing at a rate of omega radians per second so the value of theta at any point in time is going to be equal to that angular velocity omega times time. So x can be written out in terms of time. x of t is going to be equal to a times the cosine of omega t. So now working back the other way, if I know if I have a description for the x component and a description for the y component here, I can recreate a description of the vector. So I can call that a of t is equal to x of t in the x component plus y of t in the y component. Now I'm not using the exact proper notation for describing the, the vector, but I'll get, that, get to that in a second. And actually, in electrical circuits, when you're describing an AC voltage or an AC current, you ignore the time component because we're dealing with signals that have the same frequency, so we don't care about the time component when we're doing a mathematical analysis. We only care about the magnitude that's in the x direction and the magnitude that's in the y direction. So instead of having this rotating vector, we can just take it at a particular snapshot in time and look at the x component and the y component of it and use that to describe, to describe it with respect to other signals. So ultimately when I'm describing one of these vectors or these phasers, I can describe it as having an x component and a y component, or a the x component, I can call that the real component, 
and to indicate that I've got the Y component, I use this J designation, which, which indicates that it's the imaginary part. So I've got this phasor A, that's a complex number made up of an X component and a Y component. Now this is the description of a phasor in rectangular coordinates. I can also write this in polar coordinates. So that phasor A has a magnitude of A and a phase angle of theta. And they're very useful when dealing with circuits that have, that have multiple sinusoidal voltages and currents that are operating at the same frequency but have different phases relative. So it may not be so obvious how a phaser is useful when you're just dealing with one of them. But here's an example where you are dealing with multiple phasers. Well, these rotating vectors are rotating at the same frequency, so we always have the same phase relationship to them, between them. So instead of analyzing them as they rotate around in this circle, we can stop them at some particular moment in time. And we can describe each one of these as a phaser and we can then compare angles. We can do an addition, and, and in fact, the purple phaser here is the vector addition of the blue phaser and the red phaser. And as I'll show in a future video, the representation of these three, let's call them voltages or currents, as phasers allows the analysis of a circuit or analysis of these signals and the relationships between them to become much easier.